in the meantime, we're going to have some have some wonderful folks. If they have questions, feel free to put them in the, either put them in the chat or again use the hand raising feature if you'd like to have your voice have your voice live recording. In the meantime, we are going to get started. And again, I'm going to welcome everyone to today's Crush Your Mountain Health. I promised that this season we would focus more on health and wellness as opposed to the personal growth aspect of things. Because quite frankly, if you have your health and you have your wellness, you are always growing personally. You can crush through any obstacle, any mountain that comes your way. And as I always ask everyone, I'm gonna ask my, my guest today, what does it mean to crush your mountain at the end of our program? But in the meantime, let me introduce to you doctors Aaron and Wander Chadwick. They run an, an amazing facility out of Western Florida that deals with digestion correction in so many different ways. So we're gonna discuss a little bit about what they do, how they do it. We're going to, to pick their brains and get into some things to define what it means as far as functional correction of digestion and why that's so important. So once again, they have 30 years experience between the two of them, over 30 years, and they're gonna help us with this. Doctors Aaron and Wanda Chadwick, welcome to Crush Your Mountain Health. Thank you so much, Mr. Henry, Thank for you. inviting us. Yes. We feel honored that you have us on your show. Yes. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So I'm going to round up what Mr. Henry just said, fill in the gaps a little bit. Um, I'm Dr. Wanda Chadwick, yeah. and this is my amazing, brilliant husband, <laughs> and Dr. Aaron Chadwick. And for the last over 30 years, over 30 years, we met in acupuncture medical school. So we've been acupuncture doctors, state licensed nutritionists. Now they call them certified nutritionists. We're functional medicine doctors. Mm -hmm. My husband has a background in biochemistry. So he is known as the blood work king and the comprehensive urine analysis king. Nobody can read blood work like he does. Well, maybe a few, maybe there's five of them in the world that can read blood work and urine analysis like he does. We met in acupuncture medical school. We got married. We now have two 20-year-old boys. Mm -hmm. We live in South Florida. And for the last over, I think it's, I don't know, 30, between 30 and 35 years, Moscow. we would have to do the, the math. We've had a clinic. And it's called Florida Natural Healthcare Center. That's in Western Clinic, Western Florida. And we have helped tens of thousands upon thousands of people reverse and defeat whatever illness it is that they're dealing with. We, we've been blessed enough to be able to bless other people and pass it forward. For the last few years, we have another business. We have a digital virtual business called Your Nutrition Physicians. That is also, and that's another business of ours. Mm. And that is our branding. It's Your Nutrition Physicians, and we test, not guess. So we want to do some testing on you. We don't want to guess what's happening. So this morning before going to church, I'm looking at Instagram and there's so many doctors that are selling different supplements. This morning, a doctor was selling supplements on, are your hormones low? Are you feeling itchiness? Are you, your, your, your hair become, coming out? You're losing your hair. Well, we won't know which supplements are good for you until we test. Mm -hmm. We do not believe in a one supplement fits all, yeah. one program fits all. Absolutely not. So we are up the. Yes, Mr. Henry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, I was very excited. First of all, I was going to say, Dr. Aaron, you just talk too much. You have to slow down. Yeah, so I started <laughs> off. Oh, Mr. Henry. The first I started. thing, the other thing though, I was going to say though, you know, you know, I, I, I wish I had seen you guys before so I so I could figure out why why I have the hair loss. But I'm not worried about that too much. I, I kind of like the baldness part from myself. Looks but, good on you. <laughs> but I was going to ask, you know, we were talking a little bit about digestion correction. And looking at that, most people today, they think in terms of antacid, pro proton pump inhibitors, H2 receptor antagonists, like laxatives, digestive enzymes and supplements of probiotics and anti-diarrhea medicine, but now you guys 
approach things a little bit different, differently. We do, and that's where I was going to go. That's where I was going to do that. So that's why, and I knew I was going. I knew you were going. I was going to jump in there. I wanted you to share with uh, our people, and we could, then we'll talk a little bit more about it. What do you guys do? Because that's what got me so excited. So what we do is we've created the digestion creation, digestion correction workshops through your nutrition physicians. We believe in testing testing, not guessing, because we won't know how to guide you unless we do either blood work and or urine analysis. And so we've written our book and our book will re be released at the end of the year or the beginning of next year. And our program consists of two things. We believe that all discomforts and we can help you defeat any ailment on your body for two reasons. They're, they're put on your body for two reasons. It's either nutrition deficiencies. Most people are nutritionally deficient. Mm -hmm. They do not know it. So when you go to your medical doctor to get blood work, your doctor will say you are in range. So you are fine, but people are still feeling severely ill. And the second reason why people get ill is because of over toxicities. So our book is based on that. And so is our digestion correction workshops. It's based on nutritional deficiencies and toxicities. We have five days where we teach you what happens within your body. And then with our six month program, we actually put you through the program to start reversing and defeating all of that. Nutritional and toxicities. Mm -hmm. Let's go through. Let's go through um, the the the, uh, the five modalities together because I've got to ask you these questions myself. It makes me wonder. Okay, now years and years and years ago, before things got so um, influenced by big pharma and big medicine, which is basically big commercialism, uh, mm -hmm. doctors took the time to do some examinations, especially in Eastern medicine. They examined the body fluids, the, the, the body excreta, and things of that nature. And when I work with my clients, while I don't necessarily do that, what I'm concerned about is their bodily function, how they're going through their day, how many times they're going through the bathroom, things, like that, things of that nature. First question then, why is learning to visually analyze a person's poop uh, uh, for toxicity, toxicities so important? Doctors, please help us. Okay, okay. so you looked at our five-day workshop. You looked at the schedule. I snuck a peek. <laughs> <laughs> So do you want to do want to? Yeah, that so one? so I actually teach that class, but I'll let my husband. Yeah, so it. so the digestive system and the bowels, the bowels are made up of a few different things. OK, one of them, there's bile in our uh, bowel movements. Right. There is bacteria. There is fiber. And there's a little bit of different nutrients, but that's what they're mainly made of bile, uh, nutrients, water, water is one also a fiber. Right. Mm -hmm. By bile Some fiber proteins. and then hold on and then the uh, uh the bacteria the good bacteria so that's what makes up the bowel movements now in chinese medicine they understood that also and they understand the digestive system very well so for example there are different organs involved in the digestive system we have the stomach we have the small intestines we have the large intestines we have the gallbladder and liver, right? And the pancreas, those are the major organs of the digestive system, those six. And they connect through this, this called the gastrointestinal tract, this 22 foot long tube inside of us, right? It's on the inside of the inside. So what happens is when any one of those organ systems becomes deficient or it's not functioning correctly, and most of the time, Henry, it's not that they have a disease, right? But if they have a dysfunction, they're not functioning correctly, you're going to get signs of that. So that shows up in the poop. So when we have our patients go through this, this digestion correction work workshop, we're actually having them, teaching them how to analyze their own poop and what the, what ha what's happening there. For example, one of the most common types of constipation is when there's little teeny pellets, right? It looks like little rabbit pellets, right? That has to do with a lack of bile flow in your digestive system. So if you suffer from that kind of constipation, that means that your liver is either not baking good bile 
and or your gallbladder is not concentrating the bile. And some people don't have a gallbladder in that case too. You can have that, so that same kind of reaction. So we're, we teach a lot about that as far as the liver being there. We talk about, um, there's a particular scale called the Bristol scale, which tells us that the Bristol stool analysis, it, it, it kind of breaks down these different ones. There's seven different types of these uh, imbalances in the digestive system that you can analyze through the poop. So we're looking at the liver, we're able to ascertain the function of the spleen, the function of the kidneys, uh, the function of your small intestine, your pancreas, your gallbladder, because the body, again, shows those imbalances through the stool. So we have to, though, have a reference point, right? So the reference point is a long, brown, smooth bowel. LBS, we call it, right, babe? Mm -hmm. So that LBS needs to come out. If it's not LBS... And, and again, we're describing some of it here. There's more details in our in our in our correction uh, seminar or our workshop. But it, it, that tells us that these organ systems are not well. And then we can use different things, especially foods, different types of foods, and then different types of herbal medicines to correct the problems. And a really big part of our whole philosophy through this 35 years is that we don't treat everyone the same. That's right. Right. Everyone's different. So we want to look at their digestive system and then uh, analyze it and then help them focus on those things. So, and, but remember though, Henry, a big thing for people is to understand the consequences of an imbalance in their poop. Right. So what's going to happen? They're going to have they're not going to feel as energetic. They're going to get sick more frequently. A lot of patients who have these digestive issues will complain of uh, mental, mental issues brain. like like brain fog and stuff of that nature. Um, they won't feel good emotionally a lot of times, too. So the emotions are connected to our physical body and we can ascertain the emotional status through the digestive system. So they won't have good emotional well-being. And then from there. Like my wife said, she said before that that all chronic diseases come from a poor functioning digestive system. That's what they cause by. So again, she mentioned the deficiencies, nutrient deficiencies and toxicities, but understanding how the digestive system work is really crucial to seeing those things. And then, so if we don't feel energetic, we get sick frequently, we have uh, brain fog and, and not feeling good emotionally, what does that do? That de that depletes or reduces our quality of life, right? So, uh, and then you start to get into more diseases, right? Such as things like Alzheimer's disease, anxiety, depression, uh, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, even high blood pressure. These are very common maladies which have their origin in a poor functioning digestive system. So right. I hope that's a good start. To so sum it up so far, we're saying that if they're not, that if they're having these issues, it could be that they're just putting up with a lot of crap or just the wrong <laughs> type, right? That's right? exactly. Yeah. Well, toxins no. can, toxins can damage and change the microbiome. Yes. It's yes. like internal terrain, and it could lead to an inability to absorb your nutrients. Yes. If you're okay. not absorbing your nutrients, then that's when people start feeling uh, less energetic. Yes. They're getting sick more frequently. Mm -hmm. Mental. Um, problems right, right. not not thinking memory, clearly yeah. clearly poor memory brain fog attention problems attention problems so yeah. yes and the, and the, if you're nutrient deficient mm -hmm. and then you're eating junk food you're doing nothing but accumulating mm -hmm. toxins yes yes and now, that's here's the other thing to, to that effect okay because uh you know i get it and mm -hmm. i i very seldom go for a lot of junk food myself telling mm -hmm. you to tell the truth but now something caught my eye Mm -hmm. just before we, we connected. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to address that with you because of the fact that it, people don't realize the severity of things. You hear about them in, in the news, especially when it's sensationalized. Case in point, um, people go swimming sometimes and wind up the, uh, um, getting attacked by a basically a flesh-eating microbe. Okay. Now, recently, um, surgeons actually pulled from someone's brain yes. a several centimeters long parasite. Yes. And that blew my mind. So yes. my question to you, is it really true that 80 to 90% of people living in America have parasites and they don't even know it? And are they all bad parasites? 
Mm. Yes, parasites are parasites. Uh, the definition of a parasite is something that comes into a host to eat what they have because they're not getting their own food. And the host is you or me. Mm. So you see the definition of a parasite is they're eating something that doesn't belong to them. Mm. Yes, we have done our studies. That's day three no. of our digestion correction workshop. Right. We talk about parasites. And yes, people living in this country do have parasitic infestation. Absolutely. Yes. But their doctors don't know how to detect that through a simple blood test. Yes. So what happens is these parasites, yes, can go into any organ system, any tissue in your body, including the brain. Yes. And it depletes you of your nutrients because their job is to eat up your nutrition mm -hmm. so that they survive. Yes. So when we say nutrient deficiency, you are now deficient in things like zinc iron mm. vitamin d because they are eating it up right right and it's causing because they are there it's causing toxins around the cells of the trillions and trillions of cells that we already have mm. they're breaking that down and their fecal matter mm -hmm. the parasites fecal matter mm -hmm. becomes even a higher level of toxicity yes. within your body that is now leading to diseases and infections. Mm -hmm. Their bowel movement leads your body into infections. You go to a medical doctor, they give you an antibiotic, but you don't feel better because it's not a by it's not a bacteria that attacked you. It's a parasite. Yes, and and the issue with that, I'm sorry. The issue with that also is that. Parasites, I, I, I use the analogy of a stealth bomber. Maybe people don't know what that is, but it's basically it's it's in, during wartime. These airplanes, these, these huge airplanes would fly under the radar of the foreign countries and they wouldn't see these bombers. Right. And the same thing happens with parasites in our body. What they do is they hide in our digestive system. Now, so so the in, intestines. If you were to look inside the intestines, you would see all these little villi, like little projections, little hairs. And if you and if you were to open up the intestines, the surface area that that spreads out to is the size of a tennis court. Mm. You gotta imagine that. So we have all this surface area, and the point I'm making is that parasites hide in the crevices and the corners of these intestines and they create what's called a biofilm. So a biofilm is a substance that these parasites make that covers them up. So the body's immune system can't recognize them. So when a doctor does a simple blood test, he's not gonna be able to detect them. That's why we do very comprehensive blood tests and we also do very sophisticated urine tests because what we're also looking for, it's called an oak test in the urine, it's an organic acid acid test, we're looking at the waste products of those parasites, you see, and, and parasites, unique parasites have different types of waste, different types of acids that are unique to them. So we can measure them. We can see giardia. Uh, we can see uh, fungus. We can see all these different types of parasites that are there that are a problem um, and they're not detected by regular tests. I had a patient of mine uh, a little while ago, a young guy, right? 25 years old, um, strong guy, right? Uh, all straight A's in high school, college, was a wrestler. His, 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 um, hobby was it's called parkour parkour they would he would jump buildings you know that's how strong he was right but over about six month period of time he started getting very tired and sleepy he had brain fog um, his muscles ached all the time this kid was working out uh, and he was eating really well too one day his mother came home and he was lying on the kitchen floor sleeping because he couldn't make it to the bedroom and and he went to many different doctors. They did not know what was wrong with him. They thought it was all in his head. But when he came to see me and analyzed him, he had parasites. So we put him on a very specific individualized program to detoxify his type of parasites and building his body. It took me almost nine months to get him back on track, but he was back on track. And since that time, his mother's been sending me lots of patients. But that's what happens. Unfortunately, we were not... Our, our modern medical care is not really focused on these deficiencies and these toxins. Um, and that's that's just the reality of our healthcare system. So what that makes sense. What are some of the most common parasites that you find that's, that's in the body? Yeah. Does it yeah, well, 
Well, there's yeah, the tapeworms are very hook very common. Worms. Hookworms, roundworms, yes. Um, Giardia is a really big one. Um, there's a lot of fungi too. Fungi are like parasites also because again, they eat your food and they have waste and that, that causes toxins. So candida is a very common one. Um, but there's mold toxicity too, which these are all like parasitic infections Lice. that we can see. Lice is another one too. Yes. Um, yeah. people actually who have toenail fungus, it's not the toenail. So I, I have a very, I guess it's yeah, kind of so getting, yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's my cat analogy. So if you have a cat and you step on the cat's tail and the cat screams, what's bothering the cat? Is it the mouth or is it the tail? It's the tail, right? So we're, we're trained to look at symptoms and kind of look at that particular area, whatever's screaming. And, and through our many years of experience, we actually, in our book, we talk about these seven signs of nutrient deficiencies and toxicities, which include things like headaches, right? Digestive problems, hormone problems, allergies, um, things, pain, chronic pain. A lot of these things have their nature in these toxicities. And then we're able to analyze them and to see that they have these different infections and infestations and these deficiencies that come along with that. So mm -hmm. that's what we want to do. We want to look at the, the my, wife, my wife alluded to that before. She said it. We look at the root cause of the problem, Henry. We're not just looking at the symptom yes. we're looking at the cause of the symptoms and yes it's all digestive system but it could be the par pancreas it could be the liver it could be the gallbladder many people nowadays have what we call um, fatty liver that's a real big thing now i believe it's been around for about 50 years but now that it's it's more uh, known, more doctors are analyzing looking for doing ultrasounds of the liver and stuff and finding that people have fatty liver and that's a big problem too <laughs> They used to just um, attribute that to alcoholism. Yeah. So yeah. What we're finding now, and, and, and many of my clients, when they talk to me, they come yeah. out and get concerned about, hey, my doctor says I have fatty liver and yeah. I don't drink. And okay, yeah. then we have to look at what else they're doing, what's going into their system in other ways. Yeah. And yeah. You know, oftentimes, if they, are, they, if they are what we call skinny fat, that yeah. is like an underlying symptom, an idea. Yeah. That they may have that that their digestion may yeah. be the problem. Yes, that's yeah. That's so problem. so fatty liver has nothing to do with whether they're fat or they're skinny. Right. There's alcoholic type of fatty liver, mm -hmm. and then there's non-alcoholic fatty mm -hmm. liver, mm -hmm. which is dependent on the fat that you eat, mm -hmm. the poor fats that are coming into your body yeah. mm -hmm. you know the triglyceride level mm -hmm. right yes, yes yes we look at the triglyceride levels in our comprehensive blood work mm -hmm. to see what's happening with the people it's diet it's lifestyle mm -hmm. it's thoughts mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it's a whole it's it's holistic yeah that's why we're known as holistic doctors yes what yes do you think? yes definitely and so so um the liver is an amazing organ henry it does a lot in the body. The liver has 500 jobs. That's right. 500 jobs. Yeah. So, so what happens with that, it's, it's, it's a factory in the body. And when toxins get into the body, again, mainly through poor food choices, but it, people who eat well still have problems with fatty liver. And many people who eat well still have toxicities that they don't even know about. But so their liver is this factory that gets uh, bombarded by all these different chemicals, even from the water we drink, the air we breathe, right? And, and that the, the hepatocytes, the liver cells, their job is to break these things down. So what happens is as there's more toxins coming in, as you can imagine, those hepatocytes will break open. And when they break open, they can't function anymore. They're no longer there. So what happens is the fat accumulates around them. So a fatty liver is a sign that the liver cells are breaking open. Now, there's a, there's a difference between liver disease and a fatty liver a lot of times. A lot of times they go together, but sometimes they're not together because a lot of people are being more diagnosed with it, the fatty liver I'm talking about. So a diseased liver means that you have very high liver enzymes in your blood, your AST, your ALT, your GGT, your al alkaline phosphates. Those are elevated in the blood when you have a toxic liver. And that's, that's, that's clinical and you can see that. But most of the time, 
95% of the time, the patients don't have high liver enzymes. They have high normal liver enzymes because the normal uh, uh, ranges in the blood test are not good ranges. The, the ranges in the blood test are gotten from population studies. So they're, they're gotten from sick people. So you don't want to compare yourself to a sick person. So I was taught and trained that we want to look at optimum levels of blood tests. So the liver enzymes are a good example of that. We want liver enzymes between 15 and 25. That's what we want. The test on the blood system goes up to 55. So it's if you're above 25, you have a stressed liver. Mm -hmm. If you're above 55, you have a damaged liver. There is a difference, but the symptoms are a lot the same. So protecting your liver, you know, watching like what my wife said, a crucial thing is the fats that we eat. And what's what's even also along the same line, I, I knew I studied with a biochemist by the name of Dr. William Lands, L-A-N-D-S. He worked for the federal government. He was this guy studied fats for 50 years. This guy, he, I think he passed away recently, but he was brilliant. He actually developed software for the U.S. government, USDA, to have charge of the foods and the fats and the foods and different types of fats. Bill always said to me, he said, Dr. Chadwick, he said, when you eat bad fats, like fried foods or like hydrogenated oils or all these liquid vegetable oils, so quote unquote, those things are very aggressive. So what they do is that they clog up the body's liver system and the circulatory system in every area and they cause inflammation. So even if you're eating good fats, if you don't take out the bad fats, you're going nowhere. And that's why a lot of the research on different good fats is mixed. The results are mixed. Some patients do better, some patients don't, because if they're still eating those bad fats, when they're giving them the good fats, you're not going to see the results you're looking for clinically. So that's a really big issue. But again, it's those fats that regulate it. And guess what? People don't realize that the more carbohydrates they eat, more specifically, the more refined carbohydrates, i.e. white flour products like white bread and white pastas and bagels and those things like that, those things are, they call them refined, which, I, which is a very, it's a marketing ploy, right? Yes, sure. um, but, or, but, but, they're, but they're really been stripped they remove about 30 different nutrients and they spray them back with chemicals and they call it enriched, which is a lie. But anyway, when you eat a lot of refined flour products, breads and pastas, now that that starch in those foods becomes a sugar very rapidly in your body. So now that sugar goes higher and turns into triglycerides. Okay, so I just told you that I came back from the mountains recently, had a wonderful time, but here's an experience, and I'm asking you this because seeing that you are my doctors, you know, you are going to, you're, you're going to give us a little history lesson on this. So I'm out shopping with my brother-in-law, brilliant guy, you know, but he's on the old model of health and fitness type of things. So he goes and he goes, oh, let's, get some, let's get some margarine, that's really good for you. Oh. And I'm like, no. And he's like, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with margarine? It's supposed to be healthy for you. So, so seeing that, seeing, seeing that, that, that I have you here, and I yeah. know he's going to watch this, would you yeah. please tell right. us the history of margarine and why it's bad for you? All right. So, so margarine came around right. in the late 1930s, early 1940s. It was an answer to a uh, misunderstanding about fats. Uh, because when back then, when they when when a person would have a heart attack, they would do an autopsy, right? They would open them up and they would look at the inside of the arteries. And of course, the artery had plaque, right? And they analyzed the plaque, and it had it had cholesterol there, it had um, calcium there, and it also has white blood cells there too, called macrophages. So. What they thought is that because there's this cholesterol there, they thought it was from the animal fats. So they wanted an alternative. So they invented margarine. So what they did was they took a, a liquid oil, typically soybean oil or corn oil, um, or they would use like uh, corn oil, soybean oil. Uh, I'm thinking of the oils, and whatever liquid oils they had. Vegetable oil is a vegetable. big one, right? But those oils, yeah, but that I can't believe it's not butter came about. So they wanted to find a substance. They took the liquid vegetable oils and they added hydrogen to it. 
And when you add hydrogen in a, in, a, in, a, in a laboratory, you add hydrogen to the liquid oils, that's what they call partially hydrogenated. So the characteristic of that liquid now became a spread. It was a semi-solid fat. And they were like, wow, that's phenomenal. It's not butter, but it looks like butter and it spreads like butter and it tastes pretty good, especially when you add more chemicals to it to make it taste good, right? So now we have these partially or fully hydrogenated. That's what it means. The hydrogen has been added to it. But what happens is, and they kind of figured this out in the 50s, but they didn't, they didn't let the research come out. So when you add heat to these liquid oils, and you add hydrogen, you change what's called a cis fatty acid. So it's a fat that has the, the, the hydrogens on the same side. When you heat it up, it changes. It's called an isomer. So now that's called a trans fat. So the trans fat means that that, that molecule switches. It transforms itself to the other side. So now you have a, a fat that looks like this that used to look like this. The consequence of that, tell your brother-in-law, the consequence of that is that when we ingest that, when we eat that, that is like a key because the, all fats are, are go into the body and they get into the cells. Our cell membranes are made up of fats, right? We call it a phospholipid bilayer. So the, the cell membrane has this fat. Our brains are made up mainly of fat, our nervous system, our spinal column, and all of our nerves have a myelin sheath around them that's made of fat. So now we're ingesting all these artificial fats from the 1940s till even recently. And then they start seeing that, man, we're having worse time with heart disease. We're having worse time with cancer. We're having worse time because now that, that, that trans fat goes into that cell and it's like a lock and key. So imagine ha having the wrong type of key to your lock. You're going to, let's say you come home one night, you took your wife's keys, Henry, instead of your keys, and you want to get into the house and you're, and you're putting it there, but it's the wrong key. It doesn't go in the lock. So initially you try to push it in there, right? And then what happens is over time, you're going to get so mad and frustrated, you're going to damage the lock. That's what those trans fats do to our cell membranes. They slowly damage the cell membranes. And now when that cell membrane gets damaged, they leak. When they leak, now the toxins floating in your blood, for, blood from all those other bad food choices and all the cigarette smoke, all the alcohol, all the chemicals, all the artificial colorings and, and sweeteners, artificial sweeteners, they're getting into your cell and they hit the DNA of your cell. They hit that DNA and they cause a DNA to start multiplying itself. What do we call, what's a disease called when DNA starts to multiply itself unnaturally? That's called cancer. cancer. So fatty acids, margarines, hydrogenated oils are cancerous. End of story. It's Very not, it's not if they cause cancer, Henry, it's when right. will they cause the cancer at what time? And you combine that with, with a poor antioxidant status, your time is going to become quicker when you get that cancer. So we analyze that. We analyze the antioxidants in your body through your blood and through your urine to tell you your risk factors. So, so there's something else that's interesting because oftentimes along with those, those issues, we run into individuals who have low libido. But right. what's more interesting is not only do they have low libido, there's something else called low ambition. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, if uh, can, can we actually find uh, a reason yeah. for individuals who suddenly, over a period of time, you know, doctor, I'm 48 years old, and I mean, I used to be at it, ready to go do yeah. different things. Go to, now, I don't feel like I don't feel like getting out of bed. Right. I, 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 I go to the office and I don't have anything to contribute. I do a job. I go home and I go to sleep. Right. Well, what's happening there in terms of low ambition? Right. right. So there's a there's a few different factors. Okay. There's, uh, uh, the one of the major factors you mentioned is hormones. Mm -hmm. Right. Testosterone is a big deal with that. Um, we also know also that uh, you know, another major factor is your brain chemicals. They're called neurochemicals. Those are natural chemicals found in your brain. Um, and we call them neurotransmitters. Also, is another name. And things like serotonin, dopamine, GABA, those are some common ones. So when it comes to that drive you're speaking of, 
That drive is determined by two major ones. There's a few other ones too, but the major ones especially is dopamine and epinephrine. So dopamine is a major drive uh, type of uh, a neurochemical that if it's deficient, that's when you get become lazy. And dopamine is made from proteins, specifically amino acids. Where are proteins digested? In the digestive system. So if the digestive system is not working correctly, you're not going to break down your proteins to be able to, to absorb the amino acids to help you make enough of your dopamine. Now, there are many patients uh, and many people listening have these these antidepressant medications that they're taking. And I, please, I'm telling you, I'm not gonna tell you to stop taking them, but what normally happens with these type of anti-anxiety medications, antidepressants, they'll have their, their work for a little bit because they're blocking the, um, the breakdown of those particular neurochemicals, but over about six months to about a year, they stop working. So what a typical doctor will do a psychiatrist, they'll keep switching you to different ones. That's like a merry-go-round, it's, win it's a winless situation. So, but there are ways we test them with sophisticated urine tests that look at the neurochemicals. Is it a dopamine problem, right? But remember, Henry, you get you have to be able to look at these things in the context of, of the whole person. And a lot of times there's inflammation along with these problems with low testosterone and low dopamine and caused by those hydrogenated oils that you were speaking about that your brother-in-law so is, is so fond of. But unfortunately, those things are detrimental to the body. And not just that, there's a plethora of things that can do that. But that's why we like to test and not guess. So if you can't believe that it's not butter, it ain't, right? So that's right. Really that's right. Move away from that, you know. Yeah. So now here's the other thing, you know. You mentioned the doctors and you mentioned the antidepressants medication. That's a sore point with me because I'll tell you the truth. Um, number one, my mom's um, she suffered. They, you know, she was diagnosed at first schizophrenia, but it turned out to be early onset dementia, which right. they had no idea of at the time. That was the biggest wow. challenge. Yeah, yes. they didn't understand that. But then on top of that, not only did they not understand that, they were prescribing all sorts of medications for, uh, for her, which right. really um, manifested itself into tardive dyskinesia. But I also had two childhood friends, uh, both of them young women, both of them beautiful young women, mm -hmm. and both of them wound up committing suicide mm -hmm. due to the medication. And they yeah. didn't realize it. Then you see, back then they didn't have the commercials that told you may cause feelings of suicide. If you, yeah. have, you see, people were yeah. just popping like flies and jumping yeah. out of windows and things like that because, and they didn't even realize yeah. it was the medication driving it. You yes. See? So mm -hmm. my question is this: Is are there ways for us to treat individuals through the gut, through the yeah. digestive system? Yeah. Through the through in order to improve their nutrient uh, health and levels, optimize that yeah. in yeah. order to help prevent and perhaps even reverse some of the challenges, including dementia, including Alzheimer's, including depression. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yes. We have ways of defeating those things. Um, my wife alluded to the 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 good bacteria in our gut, the microbiome. Mm -hmm. The microbiome communicate with our brain cells. Mm -hmm. We know that now, right? Um, and we know that uh, there are many different types of brain imbalances. Dementia is one, Parkinson's and Alzheimer. Those are related to those neurochemicals, but they come from the digestive system. In other words, when we have inflammation in your digestive system, what happens is your body makes certain chemicals that are important to help your digestive system communicate with your immune system. Say, hey, there's something that's not right in the digestive system. Maybe you caught a giardia or you caught a parasite. So the body's letting the other cells know that there's a problem there. But in that talking with your immune system cells and your digestive cells, that creates inflammation. And that inflammation is now known in science to go from the intestines up into the brain. Into um, all the organs. Into all the organs, yes. But especially all talking about, organs, yes. Yeah. Talking about, you, you know, your, yeah, yeah. That's a, a, a situation where there is, the, that's the issue. 
It's the digestive system. That's the cat analogy, right? The tail is the digestive system, but the mouth is the dementia or, you know, whatever it is that might be there, the, 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 um, the depression and the anxiety and the attention problems are all related to the digestive system. Yes. Yeah. So you mentioned other things too, earlier in our discussion. And I just really want to circle back to that too, because, uh, you know, I ran into so many individuals that say, well, I'm just getting old, you yeah. know, I have these pains, I'm just getting old, right. you know? All right. So case in point, one time, this is a decade more, more than a decade ago. I can't believe it. Okay. I just look in the mirror and this proof that it's more than a decade ago, but he, I went to the doctor one day because I was having pains in my shoulder. The doctor told me, well, you've got, you have, you have a, uh, uh, arthritis or bursitis of the collarbone. So right. what do I do, Doc? Oh, no problem. We just we just remove the end of your collarbone. And I said, <laughs> great. If I have a headache, I'll remove part of my brain. It'll solve a problem, right? Oh, the question is, you know, I took certain actions, changed again, changed the way I was eating, did more exercise on the on, on the joints. Now I could do all this and, yeah. and all sorts of things without any pain whatsoever. So right. what are what would you say would be some of the shocking some of the shocking underlying causes of chronic joint pain, like arthritis uh, okay. uh, and other illnesses like autoimmune disease, inflammatory illnesses? So that's a really good question because one of the things that we teach are called the seven signs of nutrient deficiencies that will kill you. Mm -hmm. That's part of our digestion that's, correction. Right? That's part of our digestion correction and that's actually the name of our book, seven signs of nutrient deficiencies and toxicities that will kill you. So Dr. for example, Father, would you give us a rundown without going too deep into the book? Because I know my people are gonna say, well, what are the seven signs? I'll tell you, get the book, but she's gonna give you a couple of couple of ones right now. So number one is let's see if we can name them off the top of our head. Headaches, mm -hmm. low energy, pain and inflammation, hormonal problems, digestive problems, sleep and insomnia, and pain. And pain. Chronic pain. Chronic pain. That's it. So That's so it. That's what the manifestation of low nutrient deficiencies or nutri yeah, nutrient deficiencies and toxicities, those are the manifestations that are killing people today. Mm -hmm. And pain and inflammation is the number one, opioids are the number one drugs that are dispersed in this country. Mm -hmm. So much so that people have now an addiction mm -hmm a legal medical addiction to opioids mm -hmm. because pain is at its highest right now. Pain is at its highest right now because the food industry puts chemicals in your food mm -hmm. that make you want to come back to the food, make you want to come back to that sugar, okay. make you want to come back to that fried food, right? That they're selling you. They know exactly what they're doing mm -hmm. and it's creating inflammation and pain and insomnia and mental illness in your body and your hormones are going out of whack mm -hmm. and this is what's killing most of the people not only in this country but throughout the world mm -hmm. now there's something called hormone disruptors mm -hmm. you have hormones we have hormones women have hormones men have hormones that we all have hormones hormone disrupt disruptors are killing people mm -hmm. they're things they're real yeah things not only parasites real not only are 80% of the people living in this country parasitic have parasitic infestation and infections where they think it only happens in third world countries, right, Henry? Like, oh, we have to go to Africa and look at the children with the big bellies and the little arms. Uh, wrong answer. You may have a parasitic infestation yourself mm. and it's not detected, right? So hormone disruptors, things like deodorant, mm. using the wrong deodorant, mm. Um Plastic bottles. Plas oh, drinking out of plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. You have to drink out of bottles that are BPA free. Yeah, these are BPA. Now, to your point there, okay. See, that's the other challenge, and unfortunately, we're in a state where certain things that we say can be interpreted or misinterpreted mm -hmm. as being politically incorrect. Okay. So I'm treading lightly, but. I think we need to consider the, the the elephant in the living room, at least, well, it's not in my living room. I don't have it. <laughs> but we have to consider this one thing, okay? Over the course of the past 50 years, the use of plastics and other chemicals 
have had a direct effect on the hormonal development of children. Oh, yeah. Those are hormones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It has a direct effect on the development of children in their brains and everything else. Sure. Now we have this proliferation of individuals, and there has to be corrective measures, so to speak. That have created individuals who have had to go, who have to at some point in their lives have to go through a change. Right. A, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, is it possible that BPAs and other things like that are the cause of these developments later on in the years of these children and uh, young and old adults? Yes, yes, because what, yes. yes okay. It's one of the causes, yes. yes, absolutely. It's a conglomeration of different things that are causes. Mm -hmm. So just because you drink from a plastic bottle once or twice, it's not gonna kill you and it's not gonna change your hormones. It's 80% of the time that you're doing that. So we have the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time you gotta do the right thing, eat the right thing, have good thoughts, exercise, pray. We, we're Christians, we believe yeah. in the power of prayer. Yeah. So, but if 20% of the time you go out and have a steak, you go out and have a drink. You drink a bottle. You drink water from a plastic bottle because you're in the cup. You're in the park. That's not going to kill you. What's killing people is the, con the con a conglomeration of doing different things. For example, like I said, deodorants are a big one because your lymphatic system is right here, right? Yes, All through your big, neck. Yes. It's a big one. Mm -hmm. Women are getting breast cancer because of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we have these things right here. Right. Electronics, yeah. electronics that are zapping. This is my theory. It has not been scientifically founded. My theory is that v vitamin D is being zapped by all of these smart gadgets and lack of vitamin D is leading to breast cancer. And mm. then you go to your house and your house has a funky smell and you're spraying it with all of those. I don't want to name the brands. I don't want the net brands to so suing me but those are hormone disruptors yeah. women want to look beautiful so we put makeup on what is the biggest detoxifier in our body our skin mm. so we put cream on because we want i want i want to smell good for my husband and i put perfume on that's a hormone disruptor yeah you just raise his hormones about 10 percent when you just smiled at him just now he, <laughs> that man smiled that man had a bigger smile on his face just now so, <laughs> so, so that's a good thing yeah. Let me, 26 let me, years later. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me, let me you know, jump on the idea though. Okay. Because yes, um, that power of prayer is vital. The thinking of good thoughts is important. Yes, is important. Yes. You know, now we're moving into a different form of energy. And, and for me to get tangential on you, uh, it brings me back to your specialties and that's acupuncture because mm -hmm. we're talking about now, are, are we not, and you correct me if I'm wrong, are mm -hmm. we not now just talking about the manipulation and freeing of the flow of, of energies in the body, meridians, uh, chi, et cetera? Mm -hmm. um, we, one of the things that we studied is acupuncture. Acupuncture is um, inserting of needles that go through the channels and meridians when you have the energy of an organ that is stagnated, not necessarily the organ is sick. So you can have a uh, liver gallbladder stagnation, which leads to poor digestion, doesn't mean the liver itself is damaged. It's just the energy flow mm -hmm. of the liver is not functioning appropriately. Mm -hmm. So yes, we do acupuncture for that. But I think a, a large percentage of our practice is now on uh, digital and on, uh, would you agree, babe? Yeah. A large percentage is yes. virtual mm -hmm. because what we've learned is that if we don't know what's happening in your internal terrain, we will not get it right. Mm -hmm. Do you see that, Henry? We have to know what is it that's happening inside of you? Mm -hmm. What's the condition of your liver, of your gallbladder, of your spleen, of your lungs, of your heart? What does your blood look like? What does your urine look like? What parasitic infestations are there? Mm -hmm. So then we can come and address the whole Henry. Yeah. That yeah. makes so much sense. Yeah. And, and, and let me say... Um, so uh, let's talk about the hormones. We could, we could do a whole show just oh, about yeah. hormone stuff. Hormones is but, serious. you know, one of the biggest things that we found recently in science 
is that even if a you may have listeners out there listening who say, well, I, I eat pretty good. I know about the BPAs and I kind of watch that too, but they still can have hormone problems or have to get cancer. See, back God in the forbid. 1930s, yeah, God forbid, but in 1930s and 40s, mm -hmm. there was a particular drug that was, it's called DES, diethylsilvestrol, DES. That was the most widely prescribed hormone in the world because women would go to their doctors before the war in the you know, 1930s and the 1940s. And they would come, they would have, if they had complaints, any complaints of menstrual problems, pain in menstruation, not having menstrual period. If they were pregnant, if they were not getting, they were not able to get pregnant. If they had any type of hormone issues, a doctor would prescribe this. It was one of the most widely prescribed medications in the world. And as a female, if you're listening out there, you're a product of your grandmother, mm. your maternal grandmother. So whatever your grandmother did. So if you're listening and even you, Henry, you were the product of your grandmother. You were inside yeah. your mother while your mother was inside your grandmother. The DNA, you the get, gene. You, no, you get that? Actually, the, the actual, the, 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 um, the uterus of your mom, when she was a little, you know, gummy bear inside your mom was already formed and she was forming her eggs and you were one of those eggs. So whatever your grandmother maternally did affected not only her, her daughter, but affects you. And it affects a lot of women who are daughters of those women. So they, you can trace back that with excellent, uh, 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 uh positiveness or excellent, uh, value that that there's a problem with those DESs and similar types of drugs during that time, including birth control, hmm. right? Because these birth controls are artificial hormones that affect not only this generation, the next generation, but the following generation. So there's a lot of good research on that. So that's a real big issue there too. You mentioned too that, that uh, younger girls from eight years old, there were studies a few years ago, eight years old in Puerto Rico having their periods, eight mm -hmm. years old, because they traced it back to all the chemical hormones that they were injecting in the animals in Puerto Rico. So these little girls were getting breasts and they were getting periods at eight years old. Look, Doc, I'm going to tell you something, okay? This, 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 this is the New York coming up. I say, you look, Doc, I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. gonna, and the fact is that I, I remember... I remember, and this is not, this might be a while back, but still, I remember as a kid. Yeah. Um, I was, there, there were just a few of these young ladies, and we we're all 10 years old, but they, right. were, they were 15, 16 years old yeah. because they were developing a lot faster. Yeah. And going through those things, the menstruation, a lot faster and a lot sooner. Yeah. Even yeah. now, I have six grandchildren, granddaughters, okay? And the youngest one at 10 years old is still is, is now beginning to have her. And yeah. the challenge I was seeing there, particularly with the youngest one, she's also heading into diabetes because her poison of choice is tackies and law and 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 and, and, and liter and two liter size Coke bottles. Oh. Okay. I'm not in the house wow. to keep that from happening. I'm exactly. not there to keep it from happening. But it it, it it breaks my heart when yeah. I know that it's being allowed to yeah. take that's you know? right so hormones in little girls are what's causing them at 10 years old to look like women yeah yeah right hormones and let's talk about sugar because you said soda mm -hmm. the uh, was it the national institute of health or the cdc I think, I think it's nih um, we study all the time um i think it's the nih has a study out that even drinking two cups of soda per day decreases your mortality rate by 17%. Increases. increases your your mortality rate by 17%. Yeah. yeah. So the parents of these children that do not know what they're doing are harming and killing these children. I don't want to say that about your family, but I say it about everyone as a yes. whole. Yes, and the Bible, the Bible says that we perish for, for lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. So, yeah. you know, you know, so people got to be really clear that it's not a game anymore. These are these are not just junk food. Soda is not just a junk food. Burgers and fries are not people. just junk food. They're toxic to the body. And you people, I'm, I'm just saying, in a nice way, we really got to wake up and look at our foods because if we do not, 
the, the, the food companies hire food chemists. And psychologists. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. But their job is to make the food taste good, smell good, and then make you crave it more and more. You see, because they want to sell it. They don't really care about us. That's the truth. But we got to be wiser than a serpent and, 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 and gentle as a dove, as the Bible said, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to make sure that that we're understanding. And, and you don't have to become a biochemist, but you got to get out the sodas. I mean, a 12-ounce can of soda has eight teaspoons of sugar in it. That is ridiculous. And the artificial sweeteners are worse. They have studies now mm -hmm. where... They give these laboratory animals, they give them just artificial sweeteners. They don't put natural sugars in them. They give them artificial sweeteners in the regular food. They become obese, right? And they become diabetic. But no, they don't have any added sugar, just the artificial sweeteners, right? So now they become obese and they become diabetic. They take the fecal material, the nutribiome out of that mouse, put it in another healthy mouse, that mouse develops diabetes and becomes obese. Mm. So we know that it's directed and it's caused by the microbiome, these good and bad bacteria that these artificial sweeteners are causing a problem. Let me say it plain and simple. Artificial sweeteners will make you fatter than any sugar would ever do that. And we know that sugar is bad for you. I've just told you 70% 17% increase in your mortality rate. That means you will die 70% sooner 17. if you're 17, if you if you're eating if eating a lot of sugar, but the artificial sweeteners will make you fat and die earlier. So oh, here's I, a question I, for you. Yeah. I just heard a a, a very well-known doctor. Okay, he has his own podcast. I won't say his name, but he's known very well for his olive oil, which yeah. I love the olive oil. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Now, yeah. The biggest challenge is that I heard him mention that I think it's called amylose. Yeah. And he says, oh, that's a good, um, a, a good sweetener. sweetener. So now are we putting that together with the others and saying that that one also is just as dangerous? I, I would say that um, any time, first of all, anything that's man-made when it comes to food, I would take 180 degree and run from that that's as far as you can so so that's one thing so amylose is a type of sugar we do have a particular enzyme in our saliva it's called amylase amylase right. breaks down amylose but we don't find amylose separate from foods it's only in foods just like fructose fructose is found in fruits that's why they call it fructose it's fruit but they make fructose from corn syrup that's yeah. what you get it's called high fructose corn syrup that is a chemical that is no longer a food it sounds like it's a food because you say fructose oh that's fruit sugar mm. or it's from corn corn syrup corn is good for you right and eh, wrong answer it's all marketing ploys and those you talk about fatty livers High fructose corn syrup is the number one cause of fatty liver, and it's the number one cause of gout, which is gouty arthritis. You talked about pain before, and 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 my wife, you know, she she, she talked about yes. the uh, it raises the it raises your uric acid. Uh oh, yes, That's yes, one of the things. But also, too, we know that um, it raises your uric acid. But but all of these artificial sweeteners. What's the bottom line general thing that they do? They shift the body to become more acidic. Mm. right so now you have more acid in your body when you have too much acid in your body your body uses substances to what we call buffer the acid in science a buffering agent or buffering substance gets rid of the acid what are the buffering agents of the human body minerals calcium magnesium potassium uh zinc those kind of things, those are minerals that the body will take out of your joints to deal with the acid, and you will get painful, achy, painful joints from that extra acid. And that's a really big problem. But you can also get achy joints from too much alkalinity. Either extreme is good. So if, if you learn something, if, if your listeners learn something, one, one thing is we teach, it's all about balance, Henry. It's all about balance. Not too much of something, not too little, but the, but little, but the right amount. And that confuses some people. 
look, I didn't make the rules up. I just follow them, you know? And when you follow the rules, guess what? You win the game. If you don't follow the rules, you lose the game. And, and that's and that's unfortunate, but that is a reality. I'll tell you, I want to thank both of you so much. You know, you mentioned too much sugar and you mentioned how the Bible says uh, the people, uh, the people perish. perish. Knowledge. Yes. You know, there's another scripture there in Proverbs. It, it, it says that, you know, too much honey is well, glory is like 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 too much honey. Right. It's not good for you. Right. And so even in the Bible, it talks about having too much sugar. Yes. Too much of the sweet stuff. Okay. Yes. It can be it could be a good thing. Yes. It makes your eyes shine, make you perk up, like, yeah. it, did, like it did with Jonathan that time, right? That's it. That's it. But but too much is not good. So that it, again, I really value the, the the balancing approach that you bring. That's why I wanted to bring you on. I love the energy that the both of you put forth here and the information that you've given. Now, I think I mentioned to this mentioned um, this to you earlier, and then I was going to ask you this last question at the end of the show. And sure. again, I really um, I called you. I called you a power couple, and you did not and do not disappoint. Uh, I think that I think the entire state of Florida should be aglow with 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 with, with the power Thank that you. you. So that said, doctors Aaron and Wanda Chadwick, mm. what does it mean to you to crush your mountain? Each of you, give your perspective, please. Crush your mountain. That would mean crush your mountain. Hmm. It could be twofold. Crush your mountain can mean crush whatever's in your way and set yourself free. Mm -hmm. Defeat it. We know how to help you defeat any health issues. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Henry, you're invited to digestioncorrection.com. That's our workshop. We do it once a month. Correction, digestioncorrection.com or crush your mountain could mean let's just crush it. Let's just do it. Mm. Let's take over. Let's take control. Mm. We are so empowered. Sure. We have the power to take back our health mm -hmm. and not just listen to what pharmacodia, pharmacodia is it, yeah. mm -hmm. is telling us so that we have to stay on this vicious cycle of medication drugs for the rest of our lives. So you can crush your mountain, learn about health, mm -hmm. learn about your own body, take back your health mm -hmm. and live in optimum health, like living in the blue zone. Yeah. Like those people that live in the blue zone areas, you can live like that. You could definitely crush your mountain yeah. and live yeah. there in those bl that blue zone mentality until the Lord calls you home. That's it. And for me, when I think of crushing a mountain, um, crush your mountain. Okay, I I think of <laughs> being able to teach people what we're talking about, all these truths that we've been studying for the past thirty five years, and then guiding them in our six month program that will reprogram their brain mm -hmm. to get them over those obstacles, their mountains that they're struggling with. And they don't even know why they're struggling with it. And they don't know that there's other, other possibilities out there, other alternatives, other alternatives out there. So that's why we developed a six month program to actually shift their thought while they go through that. We hold them by the hand because people have tried, but they just, they, they, they fall off off because they don't have that vision so my crushing of the mountain is giving people the vision to see that there is hope that nutrition has answers that the bible and god is true and that he gives us answers in the bible even about nutrition and health and about many other areas of our lives so crushing the mountain is getting people on a good program that they could follow through on and be the best that they can be and live a life that they want to, to be having good energy, being able to play with their grandkids on their floor, being able to go hiking, whatever it is that you want to do. We want to get those obstacles out of your way so you can crush that mountain. And passing it on to your grandchildren. Yes. Like Make you it, have six yes. grandchildren. Yeah, you passing got, all this. A legacy, a legacy. That's right. Creating a legacy yeah, for a your point. babies yeah. so they can pass it on to their babies and their babies and so on and so on. Yes. That's amazing. And I'll tell you what, the fact of the matter is that all of us, one way or another, uh, have an obstacle, have a mountain. It could be that of health or other things that need to be addressed. But I want to thank both of you so very much for being with us today. And everyone, I, I will tell you this. 
I bring on power people like this, basically to share what is possible, what is out there, the alternative to the noise of overweight people dancing about a drug that they can take so they can just stuff their face with the stuff that the food industry puts out. To give you the opportunity so that each individual is not listening to the doctor as their God or as their boss, but as their teammate, helping them to optimize their health. If you have the knowledge, you have the power to move forward. If you have the information, such as with doctors Aaron and Dr. Wanda, that they can go and give you this information, you can go to their website, which we'll leave a link in the in the in the bottom of the show notes here. But we will, if you have those tools, that's your pickaxe, that's your sledgehammer to continue to chip away at the challenges you face, and to go ahead and to create an optimal health for you on this side of Armageddon. So again, I want to thank the doctors so very much for being with us. And as I always say at the end of the show, don't just climb your mountain, crush through it, and we'll see you next time. Thank you all so very much for being here today. Take good care, doctor. Bye-bye.